G'day. Here's a curious geometry question for middle schoolers. Well, geometry and graph theory is a kind of a mixture, mixture of a question. It's kind of cool. It goes as follows. Amanda Reckonwith draws five circles with radii 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then for each circle, she plots the point C, A, where C is the circumference and A is its area. Which of the following, and here they are, five examples, which of these following five examples could be her graph? All right. Deep breath, because this is a bit of a strange question. So Amanda draws five circles with radiuses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then she plots the point C, comma, A. So C, comma, A, where this is the circumference, and that's the area. Now, of course, my brain goes right away to um, circumference is what? 2 pi r is the form of the circumference of a circle, and area is pi r squared. So she'll get five of these points, one for each of the five circles she draws, and then she'll get a graph. So which could be her graph? All right, this is indeed a strange question. What can I do? Well, I'm not actually quite sure what to do, other than, I guess what I've started doing already, which is strategy number two, do something. At least I've written the formulas for the areas of the uh, circumference and the area of a graph, of a circle, excuse me. That's something. Um, she does this with five circles. Oh, she does it with five circles. So she has radius one, radius two, radius three, radius four, radius five. So I could actually write down what the five points are. For example, for radius uh, one, C is 2 pi r, 2 times pi times 1, comma pi r squared, pi. That's her first point. For radius 2, she get the point uh, 2 pi r, 4 pi, pi r squared, 4 pi. Radius 3, I might as well keep going because I don't really know what else to do right now. Uh, 6 pi, 2 times 3, times pi, and then uh, pi r squared, 9 pi. Radius 4, 8 pi, and uh, pi r squared, 16 pi, and radius 5, 10 pi and uh, what, 25 pi. All right, there's the actual five points. Hmm. I mean, I'm hesitating right now because I suppose I could plot them, but they're kind of awkward numbers. Ugh. Um, what can I do? What can I do? Well, I guess, okay, the part that makes them awkward is this pi everywhere. You know, I'm going to be bold. I know pi is 3.141592 or something, but I'm going to say pi is very much close to 3. It's about 3 really crude. But if I say it's about 3, I can at least see this number is about, what, 2 times 3 is 6, 3. And this number is about uh, 12, 12. And this number here is about uh, uh, 18, 27. And this is about uh, uh, 3. So 24, 48. These numbers are getting really big. Oh, and this one is about um, 30, uh, 75. All right. At least I know this is really crude, but it gives me an approximation. In fact, I see, oh, it goes 6 to 12, 12 to 18, 18 to 24, 24 to 30. They go up at a nice constant rate, but 3 to 12 to 27 to 48 to 75, they're getting really big quite quickly. So that tells me, aha, the graph must be going up. As the x coordinates step over at a constant rate, these y coordinates keep going up at a faster rate. So it must mean, it must be a graph that keeps going up. So it can either be A, this one has a little dip, that can't be right. Well, that's totally wrong, it doesn't go down again. Could be D, oh, and it's not E, it's going down. That was helpful. So now I have to choose between A and D. Interesting. Now what's the difference between these two graphs? Well, one looks slightly curved and one looks like very linear. Hmm, interesting. But I'm going to stop there because I think I have an approach in my mind now about how to think about which of these two must be correct. So I'm going to stop there and let you think about it too. And when you think you've got the answer, check the essay that goes with this video. Let's see if we're in agreement what we think on this at this point. All right, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.